Hey guys, this is Sharya. Today's video is a different one. So please try to stick with me till the end of this video. The world is racing towards the use of renewable energy because we know that fossil fuels won't last forever. Companies like Tesla and BMW are acing towards electric cars. 3 to 4% of vehicles in the US are plug-in electric vehicles. Slowly, the dynamics of public transportation is going to change. Coming to India, only 0.3% of vehicles are electric and most of them are electric scooters. In 2019, government decreased the GST on electric vehicles from 12 to 5%, which is a considerable amount to save, and this was done to increase and encourage the number of electric car users. The government is gunning for its goal of making 30% Indian vehicles electric by 2030 to reduce pollution as much as possible. By this transformation, 9 gigatons of carbon emissions can be prohibited from damaging the earth. The Indian government has launched a scheme called Fame India, which is a national mission on electric mobility. Under this, public transportation like autos and buses will be fully electric by 2030. But why is the government doing all this and in what way a common man is benefited? So let's see why electric cars have an edge over petrol or diesel ones. Low ongoing costs. Compared to petrol or diesel, where they cost from 5 to 8 rupees per kilometer, an electric vehicle costs only around a rupee per kilometer. Coming to the maintenance, for gasoline engines, oil changes, spark plugs, transmission fluids, many services are required. But for electric car, none of this is required, so this makes it very economical to maintain. People might be thinking that electric cars will be very slow because they are heavy. But you are wrong. Unlike the gasoline engines, electric motors do not have any flat spots like turbo lag. Due to this, it gives the car ballistic pickup at any speed. The power delivery will be very linear. Coming to the convenience, all electric cars have auto, auto transmission and are very quiet. So this makes it very comfortable for the passengers. The only limitation at this point of time is the range. If you commute in and around the city or if it is a secondary car, then definitely this is no more a limitation for you. Coming to the next interesting question. So why does a cab or taxi should be electric? I know you might be thinking that electric cars have low range, their initial cost is very high, they take very long to charge, etc. But now, let's see a small calculation of something called as TCO. It's called as total cost of ownership. This method should be generally employed when you are comparing between two products. So let's see what a person saves when he shifts from gasoline car to an electric one. For comparison, let's consider the all-time favorite taxi which is a diesel Tata Indica and from electric, it will be the Tata Nexon EV. I know there's a huge price difference between these both, but still, let's see why the Tata Nexon EV makes more sense. First, the initial cost of that Indica is around 7 lakhs and that of Nexon EV is around 16 lakhs. There's a big price difference between these two. But still, let's compare the maintenance and fuel costs over 5 year time period. Let's assume that a taxi driver commutes around 5000 kilometers every month. So the total distance traveled in one year is 60,000 kilometers and in a span of 5 years, it is 3 lakh kilometers. As per kilometer price of a diesel taxi is around 5 rupees in the city, the estimated fuel cost will be around 15 lakhs for 5 years and that for Nexon EV is around 2 rupees, so this estimates to 6 lakhs for 5 years, which is almost one third of the diesel one. Coming to the maintenance cost, assuming the India's annual maintenance is around 30,000 because of the oil changes, spark plugs, transmissions, etc. So over 5 years, estimated maintenance cost will be around 1.5 lakh rupees, and that for Tata Nexon EV, it is around 10,000 yearly. So estimated for 5 years, it rounds up to 50,000 rupees, but here also it is one third of diesel's maintenance. So if you estimated the total cost of ownership for 5 years, it totals at 23.5 lakhs for the diesel Tata Indica and 22.5 lakhs for the Tata Nexon EV. So what have we understood? Even if the initial cost of the diesel one is low, you end up paying more than what you pay for an electric car. For now, there are no small hatchback electric cars which can be compared to Tata Indica, but still an electric compact SUV has proven to be more economical than a small diesel hatchback. In the future, 
when the electric cars are mass produced the initial price of the car will definitely come down then the already economical car will become even more economical now if we talk about carbon emissions india has been rated one of the most polluted countries each taxi will produce around 150 grams of carbon monoxide per kilometer so yearly a taxi will produce around 9 tons of carbon waste so assuming that there are 20 lakh taxis on the road in india right now a whopping total of 2.3 gigaton of carbon emission can be completely eradicated i'm pretty sure that companies like mahindra and tata will definitely revolutionize the dynamics of vehicle to travel as their pioneers in developing electric technology so let's step ahead and make the air better to breathe by going electric if you like my video please drop a like and consider subscribing to my channel also share this video as much as possible so that we can bring a change together thank you so much